Hello friends, this video on microorganisms, friend and foe, part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. And then the final method is the heat and cold treatment. So let us first look at the heat treatment. Now you would have often seen at your home that whenever you, uh, I mean, whenever you purchase milk, what happens to your mother? First of all, she boils milk and then keep it aside. Why? Because boiling milk helps to keep it good for a longer period of time. Now what happens during boiling? So whenever you heat a food item, it destroys the microorganisms which can spoil the food. In in fact, because of this, this reason only, it, like when we buy raw vegetables, often it will say that do not eat the raw vegetables without washing. So when you wash it, some of the microorganisms are like removed by water. Now when you boil it, the remaining microorganisms also get killed. So that means boiling helps to destroy the microorganisms and thus you get a, a more fresh food. So one example of heat treatment is sterilization. You would have often seen that for children who feed on bottles, their bottles are sterilized very often, almost on daily basis their bottles are sterilized. So what is what sterilization? It is a process in which a food is heated to a very high temperature, a temperature greater than 100 degrees Celsius for a sufficient time. Because when you may talk about heat treatment, it also plays a very important role that for how much duration you are heating that food object. So the greater the duration of heating, the better will be the end. So therefore, when we talk about heat treatment, now for in order to destroy different types of microorganisms, we might need to heat it to different temperatures. That's because different microorganisms have different thermal resistances. So maybe for one microorganism, you might need to heat it to a higher temperature when compared to some other microorganism. So, but uh, overall this heat treatment will fully or partially destroy the microorganisms that are capable of spoiling the food. So it is a good conservation technique for long duration. So you can preserve it for quite a long time. Now in sterilization what happens is the temperature is also quite high and the duration for which it is done that is also quite high. So for when it is heated to, to a very high temperature for a very long time then most of the microbes get destroyed. So for perfect sterilization the container as well as the content both are sterilized. Now, uh, when you talk about the container sterilization, I gave you the example of the feeding bottles of uh, small babies. You would have seen that their bottles get sterilized almost every day. So how is it sterilized? Because for babies, their body is quite weak and they might get, get infection even quick, more quickly than adults. So their bottles, they are boiled in water to a very high temperature and for quite sufficient time. In fact, you have bottle sterilizers available in the market these days. So that way the container gets sterilized so that there is there are no microorganisms present in the container. So that's how you are, we are keeping the container safe. And the content is also sterilized. Now in this case, the content is milk. So obviously we boil the milk sufficiently so that it is uh, microbe free. So not only for these feeding bottles, but in hospitals, most of the equipments like the syringe or the knives or the scissors whichever is used in hospitals they are all sterilized so all the surgical equipments they are sterilized before they are being used now in order to ensure even better uh, cleanliness or better hygiene the container is sterilized the content is sterilized and then they both are packaged in an environment which prevents the growth of microbes so that nowhere there is a scope where microbes can attack now in a very similar way we can also preserve by cold treatment like how we saw that by boiling we can destroy a lot of microorganisms in a very similar way if we reduce the temperature in that case also the low temperature is not favorable for the growth of several microbes. So low temperature prevents the growth of microorganisms and this is known as the cold treatment. And your refrigerator is the best example of cold treatment. So when you keep the loaf of bread inside the refrigerator, it remains perfectly fine for quite a few days. At least for 3-4 days it is fine. It, it does not get infected by yeast. 
but if you leave it outside you see this kind of uh, white layer forms on it and that happens due to the fungi so low temperature will also inhibit the growth of several microorganisms and that's why we use refrigerator basically so that we can store things for longer duration so now based on this heat treatment and cold treatment let us talk about something uh, an important concept called pasteurization so what is pasteurization so here we will see that it is a combination of heat treatment and cold treatment and it is, it is extremely useful for storage of dairy products so it helps to preserve milk and all the dairy products for a long time so you would have seen that these days you get milk in packets which can be stored for a couple of days similarly you get certain milk certain packet milks which remain good even for a couple of months and uh, some, the pasteurized milk are not even needed to be boiled so because since they are micro free so you don't really need to boil it so what is pasteurization so it is a process in which milk is heated to about 70 degrees celsius for 15 to 30 seconds so for small time small amount of time it is heated and then suddenly it is chilled and stored so first you heat it a little bit so when you heat it that heat treatment it tends to kill a couple of organisms and then immediately you chill it you put it inside a refrigerator kind of place and then after that it gets rid of all the microorganisms so why do we do both heating and cooling as a part of pasteurization so in pasteurization what we want to do is we want to reduce the number of pathogen we want to reduce the number of disease causing microorganisms so if you compare pasteurization with sterilization in sterilization our aim was to kill all microorganisms present in the food it doesn't matter whether they are capable of causing a disease or not we just want to kill all the microorganisms so for that purpose we just heated it to a very high temperature but here in this case we do not want to kill all the microorganisms we only want to kill those which are pathogens that is which can cause diseases in fact we want to reduce their number of pathogens so we do not want to kill them completely we just want to reduce their number to a safer limit limit therefore what happens is in sterilization if you sterilize a food item in that case the taste of the food product gets impacted because you heat it to a very high temperature so therefore the composition of the product changes but in pasteurization the taste of the food product doesn't change because you just heat it to a minimum temperature and then you suddenly chill it so that way pasteurization aims to reduce the number of pathogens so here what happens is the pathogens are killed and also the number of microbes are aimed to be reduced so this process of pasteurization was discovered or invented for the first time by Louis Pasteur in 1864 so what he discovered was he discovered this concept with uh, beer and wine so when he heated beer and wine he found that heating them was enough to kill most of the bacteria that caused the spoilage of beer and wine. So that's how this idea stuck him that okay, so if we provide some heat treatment followed by cold treatment, we can actually store it for a longer period of time. And that is why it was named as pasteurization after his name. <coughs> so let us look at the advantages of pasteurization. First of all, it destroys the pathogens in milk, so all the disease-causing organisms get killed because the high temperature, short time pasteurized milk, so it, it raises it to a high temperature, but at the same time it is done for a very short time. So that way it, it is able to destroy the pathogens. It also reduces the number of spoilage microbes. So firstly, the disease-causing microbes get killed. Other microbes which are capable of spoiling the food, they also get reduced. And thirdly, the shelf life of milk gets increased. That means the milk can be stored for a longer period of time. Now, for some milk which are heated to a high temperature for a short time. So, there are different ways how you can increase the shelf life. Now, if you heat the milk to a high temperature but for a short time. So maybe for a few seconds but to an extremely high temperature so in that case your shelf life may be from two to three weeks now if you heat the milk for a higher temperature for a higher time so that is called ultra pasteurized so ultra pasteurized 
milk can stay good for two to three months. Now, if ultra pasteurized milk is followed by sterile packing, when, when I say sterile packaging, that means the container where the milk is stored that is, a st that is sterilized. The container is sterilized and when the container and the content have been packed together, that time also the environment is made microbe free. So that is called sterile packaging. So if ultra pasteurized milk is followed by sterile packaging so in that case it can last for almost nine months so therefore you would have seen that there are different types of milk which are available in the market these days so some milk they stay really good for a very long period of time so this is how a pasteurization work works and these are some of the techniques which helps us to preserve food items for a longer period of time Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.